Hey guys, today we are going to make some sugar cookies. And since it's Valentine's Day coming up, we figured we would make some Valentine sugar cookies. You can decorate them however you want, but this is a recipe brought to you by my sister's mother-in-law. And she makes the best cookies. Every cookie that I've tried that she's made is so good and she has several different kinds and so I got this recipe from her and I've been making it for a couple of years. She's tried and failed at different types of things. She's tried butter but she says the best thing is margarine. Now I hate margarine. I hate using margarine and so does she but she tried butter and she tried margarine and margarine is just better. So we're going off of Kathy Kathy says margarine, we do margarine. And trust me, these cookies are so light and fluffy. Remember, I like the soft cookies. Yeah. You can eat like five of them and they're just so light. So we have margarine. Joel, do you wanna put the margarine in? All of this? The whole thing. So it's one cube of margarine. Now we're gonna add one and a half cups of sugar. Okay, now we're gonna turn it on. Just like any of our cookie recipes, we cream the sugar and the butter together, and then we scrape the sides. Scrape the sides? Scrape the sides. <laughs> now we're gonna do our eggs, and you need two eggs. Should we get a different cup for you to crack them in? Sure. Okay, turn it back on. Another thing I forgot to say is make sure your margarine is softened. And if you'll notice, we have our whisk beaters today. So we are gonna do that until it gets too thick and then we're gonna switch it out for our bread mixer. We do what Kathy does because her cookies are amazing. Now we're gonna add one cup of sour cream and she also says do Western Family sour cream because it's thick. But if you don't have Western Family, just get the thickest sour cream that you can find and you need a cup of it. So we have our margarine, our sugar, our eggs, and our sour cream. Now we're gonna do our flour. Now we're just gonna do, um, we need three and a half cups of flour, but we are going to just do half of that, and then we're gonna switch out our mixer. So let's just do two of them. Next we need two teaspoons of baking powder. Now we need a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Do you guys know what the difference is? So baking powder and baking soda work kind of the same. They both help things rise and grow a little bit. Mm. Baking soda acts as a neutralizer for when you have something that's a little more acidic or sour in your dough. We're using baking soda because we have sour cream in there. But if you think about it, we use baking soda inside of chocolate chip cookies, but most of my recipes for chocolate chips don't have sour cream. So the acid or the acidic thing inside of chocolate chip cookies is brown sugar. Because brown sugar is a little bit acidic and so that's why you need to add baking soda. It just neutralizes it all. Okay, now we need salt. Half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, now give it a little turn, a little stir. Oh, yeah, this is the fun part. Just a little stir, just to mix it in a little bit. That's pretty good. That's great. Now we're gonna take off the whisk, and we're gonna add the bread Wait, that mixer. Okay, now we need another one and a half cups of flour. Okay, now we're gonna mix it again. And we also need to add our vanilla and our almond extract. <laughs> now you can, all, you can do lemon extract instead of almond extract if you want. Either one of them tastes good. But Kathy's recipe says lemon, so you pick what you want, lemon or almond. I prefer the almond. So we need <laughs> one teaspoon of almond extract. and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Let's turn it on. 
Now we are going to take half of it. We're gonna split it in two, but in we're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and we're gonna put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes to get hard. 30, okay. 30 minutes. So it's a little bit soft. I don't want that to scare you off. It's supposed to be soft. You can add um, a little more flour if you want right now or when you're rolling it out. Once it chills a little bit, it does get a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so I have half of the dough and we're just putting it in this plastic wrap. And then I'm gonna, I know, I'm a mess, huh? We're just gonna flatten it out a little bit so it chills a little bit better. And we're gonna put it in the fridge. And you can keep it in the fridge like this for up to three or five days. But you can chill it for 30 minutes and then you can start working with it or you can let it chill for a couple of days if you're not ready for it. So we're gonna put these in the fridge and let them chill. So while those are chilling, we're gonna hurry up and clean up and we're gonna get our oven ready to 375 degrees. Okay, we got our stuff cleaned up and it still hasn't been 30 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and make our frosting. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have ever used a food processor to make frosting, but for some reason it's amazing. <laughs> this time, we're gonna use butter. Not margarine for the frosting, okay guys? So we're gonna use softened, softened butter. So one half cup of butter. Okay, then we need two and a half cups of powdered sugar. And then we need a teaspoon of vanilla. That's the one. And then we need one quarter cup of cream. Pour it in. Okay, it's really easy. Okay, now food processors can be a little tricky to close because you have to have this lid in for safety purposes before it'll start. A lot of times I just keep my frosting white and then I decorate it with different colors for different um, holidays. So I'll do red sprinkles. I've got a bunch of different sprinkles for Valentine's Day. If I wanted St. Patrick's Day, then I would keep it white and just do green sp sprinkles. So we have some red food coloring. This will like stain things, so be careful with it. Do, I don't know, four or five drops. Do you like it dark pink or light pink? I don't care, dark pink. Okay, do you like five? One, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's put the lid back on. Okay, All right. <laughs> but look how creamy and pretty. This is so nice for just frosting some nice, fluffy, soft cookies. The one trick for these cookies is they really are better the next day. So I was just teaching you how to make the frosting and we're gonna go ahead and frost ours today too to show you what they look like. But the trick is bake them, let them cool on the sheet pan, and then you can move them and keep them in a container overnight and then the next day is when they're really the best. So then save them and then, so the next day is when you're gonna add the frosting. So plan ahead. We're giving this video to you on Thursday. Valentine's Day isn't until Tuesday. Now these are great for different holidays. What other holidays do we like to make these cookies for? Um, we like St. Patrick's Day, Halloween, Christmas, Christmas all, all of them Easter. Easter, yeah, we, we do, do some like Easter. Blue, we do pastel colors and sometimes the 4th of July too. Okay. Because we're gonna be rolling out our sugar cookies on this counter, we wanna sanitize it. So I just like to sanitize it with some Clorox wipes or you can do some disinfectant spray and just make sure that it dries completely because you don't want Clorox flavored cookies. We've got our dough. Oh, that's 30 minutes? 30 minutes, nice and cooler. Okay, so first, we want to sprinkle some flour on the surface because it was really wet, right? I love doing this. Okay. You wanna get your sheet pans ready and line them with parchment paper. We'll have a link to those on our website. Okay, so we put that down. This has actually been chilling for a little bit more than a half hour. Now you don't want these to be super thick, but you don't want them to be super thin either because you want them to be soft. 
I like to lift it up a little bit and make sure that there's flour everywhere. It's okay. That happens. Huh? Now it is, it does get hard because we want it to be the same thickness all around. Okay. Feels pretty smooth and flat, right? Now we have our hearts. We have um, some different size hearts. We're gonna do this smaller size on one sheet because we don't want big ones and little ones because then they cook differently, right? So maybe one sheet we'll do some small and one sheet we'll do some big. The sharp side. So these are more like a quarter inch thick. They're not very thick. It's been a while since I've made them. Beautiful. So when we're done with one, we can just ball it all up and roll it out again That's and do it all can. over again. Play if you have a gas oven that tends to cook a little slower, you wanna bake these for about 11 to 12 minutes. But if you have an electric oven or your oven tends to cook a little faster, check after eight minutes just to make sure. You want them to be dull on top, not shiny. And then remember, we want them to cool on the sheet pan. So, eight minutes. Okay, Jules, our cookies are done. These actually only took seven minutes. Good thing I was keeping an eye on them. But that was only seven minutes. But you can see that they're starting to go brown along the edges. And I don't want them, look at that. Is it getting hot? Mm -hmm. I don't want them to burn. So we went ahead and took them out. And we're gonna let them cool. And then we're gonna frost them. We found some helpers to do the rest of our cookies. What part are we gonna do together, guys? Um, I'll say the frosting. The frosting. Everybody's gonna help frost them because that's the best part of making sugar cookies, other than eating them, right? <laughs> but do you know what is so special about today, you guys? No. Today is the mark that we've been doing these videos for one year. Our very first video right here was when we did Valentine's popcorn. Do you guys remember that one? No. Yeah. Valentine's oh, yeah. popcorn, do you remember that? Jane and Kate helped with that one. We did Valentine's popcorn, so if you need another Valentine's idea, make sure to check out this oh, video. Because yeah, it was so fun. And so now we have our Valentine sugar cookies and we're just gonna frost them. So look at how creamy and smooth this is. I love to use this offset spatula because it doesn't have, you can use a butter knife and that's probably what the rest of us are gonna use because we only have one of these. But it just goes on really smooth. I like a nice thick layer. You just go oop, 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 and done. Okay, just like that. I love these red hots. Okay, who's next? Me, 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 me. I'll just go. So thanks for watching another episode of Half Pint Cooking. These sugar cookies are so good and I just want to hurry up and eat one. So we're just going to sign off and say bye. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for subscribing and share with your friends. We've had so much fun this whole year. We've done a new video every week. Every Thursday at 10 a.m. we have our new video come out. So make sure to stay tuned for those and tell your friends about this so they can learn how to cook too. Give us a thumbs up. Follow us. Subscribe. Thanks. Bye. So my sister's brother's mom. What? Let's get this out of the way too. Bye. What if you did it? How is your cookie? Good. Do you hear the clock? Should we wait for the clock? Yeah, go ahead.